Greetings, Stout Laws. A common question surrounding the first-person melee genre is which of the two active games is worth buying or investing time in. Rather than approaching this topic from my usual lens of a hyper-competitive player that's rank 1 on Mordhau and has been winning tournaments since 6 years ago in Shiv 1, instead I'm going to look at this topic from a top-down perspective for the benefit of the casual player. In other words, which game is more fun? As we are approaching the first year anniversary of Chivalry 2, coinciding with the end of Epic's exclusivity deal and the subsequent launch on Steam, we can expect the competition between these two titles to flare up. My answer may be somewhat surprising given how much I've played Mordhau, but Chivalry 2 comes out on top and it's not even close. The main offering both games are attempting to provide is a large team objective experience and whilst I'm quick to criticise Tom Banner considering they abandoned the scene I came from, everyone should still acknowledge that when it comes to world design, whether that's maps, voice acting, lore, and the overall soul of a game, Tom Banner are industry leaders. In all of these aspects, Chivalry 2 is far superior to Mordhau, the maps are more spectacular than ever, the voice acting, whilst good in Mordhau, is exceptional in Shiv 2, where the lines are delivered with more impact, in part due to the overarching story of the battlefields that you're fighting on. The decision to link the voice lines to gestures is a smart one, as trying to combine them in Mordhau becomes tricky. Who can forget Chivalry's teams of Agatha and Mason when the soldiers are screaming them at every opportunity? I also recall the King's names, meanwhile in Mordhau I can't tell you the red and blue team names despite having thousands of hours in game. Chivalry 2's map structure is intrinsically linked to the team objective game mode, which is in stark contrast to Mordhau where the maps were made first and the simplistic objectives of cart pushing or point capturing were crudely jammed in at the end. Mordhau's map issues stem from development. The flagship mode Frontline was clearly rushed out the gates. Initially, it was Triturnian's attempt to differ from the tried and tested success of Shiv 1's team objective mode, but launched as a bland circle capturing sleep inducer. Triturnian, to their credit, were quick to pivot their focus to Invasion, which is a copy of Chivalry's team objective mode, but the lack of unison between map and mode design was a detriment to their product. Even in Mordhau's newer maps, the policy of map first, mode later still feels present and the objectives themselves are lacklustre. By and large, they're lifted from Shiv 1 with little adaptation. Whereas Tom Banner are still a creative powerhouse, one of the most memorable objectives in Shiv 1, killing the peasants at Stones Hill, returns with a twist. The defending team starts off as the lowly peasants in question. If you don't die straight away, you can actually proceed through the next stage as a peasant still. In one of the new maps, a department that Chivalry 2 is outpacing Mordhau severely, players have to capture pigs. Hauling plump pigs over your shoulder is surely a contender for best objective of all time. Mordhau isn't without its charm. Notably, you'll find naked dwarfs aplenty and bards by the dozen, peacefully strumming away amidst the violence. But to be honest, these inclusions can also detract from the game, as even casual players can find themselves isolated in a match where their teammates insist on roleplaying. If you are into RPing, Mordhau is well suited for this, with its modding and private servers where you'll find like-minded RPers. If you haven't watched my video where I crash one of their weddings, what are you doing? Humorous moments in Shiv 2 are weaved into the gameplay more authentically, whether that's through the player having a dedicated suicide animation, the your mama voice command, or the sheer variety of interactable objects in the maps that serve as makeshift projectiles, including poultry. You're never far away from your battle mutating into a Monty Python sketch. Customization is a strength in each title. As previously mentioned, for better or worse, Mordhau offers more freedom, whereas Chivalry 2 forces restraint through its class system. Whilst Mordhau presents more options, Chivalry 2 sometimes allows for greater variety. For example, you can more readily run into battle helmetless in Shiv 2, as it doesn't impact your health, whereas in Mordhau, this would be a quick death sentence. Despite promising female mercenaries since the Kickstarter, Mordhau is yet to include playable women, whereas women featured at the launch of Shiv 2. This is still a contentious topic despite the progenitor of this genre, Mountain Blade Warband, allowing full character customization, including gender, and I'm aware the genre is something of a boys club, as demonstrated by my impressive 99% male audience, which is indicative of the problem at hand. What we have to understand is for some reason the population is half female, meaning that if we want this genre to be popular, it's a no-brainer to add women to the game. The potential audience has now doubled. This is why Overwatch has more female players than any other FPS, because they included female heroes. Apparently, Women in Mordhau is still in the pipeline, but who knows when this will finally be added. Overall, if you want to buy one of these games purely for the customization, Mordhau is the winner here, as the armor is less stylized with significantly more options available. 
I have reviewed Chivalry 2's combat in a separate video which I'll link below and I've talked about Mordhau's combat to death so I won't go into depth here especially as it's irrelevant for the casual player. To put it simply, Mordhau's combat is built on a weaker foundation that is more inaccessible for new players whereas Chivalry 2 is more intuitive. Despite this, Mordhau's combat is stronger due to years of alpha and early launch testing where the gameplay, whilst flawed, has incredible polish including more responsive movement and swing connection and also weapon balance. Nearly every weapon in Mordhau is viable. I haven't unlocked most of the Shiv 2 weapons and even if I had, there's no rank system for them to be cheesed and so it would more or less go unnoticed, besides the usual complaints that are probably inaccurate anyway. I don't think there's anyone over at Tom Banner that truly understands what made Chivalry 1 so good, but increasingly I've going to share that sentiment for Triturnian, although there is now someone that's actually skilled at Mordhau on the Mordhau dev team due to Bob, my former VK teammate being hired recently, shout out Bob. Shiv 2's combat is serviceable enough for casual play and even has a fairly deep skill ceiling which you'll find out first hand if you ever have the misfortune of stumbling into a dual server. If you're brand new to the genre, you'll probably find Chivalry 2 easier to access but it does overcomplicate itself unnecessarily with its jabs, heavy and special attacks. The one area where Mordhau truly triumphs is also the one where the devs do their utmost to retreat from. Mordhau is a more competitive game with a ranked mode and a leaderboard that is still unfortunately occupied by a booster at the time of recording. As the devs are quick to tell you, ranked only captures a small percentage of the player base but for some it's their main drive to keep playing, to register that improvement and climb the ladder. It also continues to be the main draw for large streamers like XQC who occasionally still dabbles in Mordhau playing purely ranked as competitive matchmaking is what they are most accustomed to. The 3v3 team mode is uninspired which is partly why it's dead and as a result this can only be a source of entertainment for so long until you reach elo heaven and can no longer find matches without having a network of high rank players. Chivalry 2 borrowed from Mordhau here by including both the 1v1 and 3v3 modes as a matchmaking option which can be fun for the smaller engagement scale but they are unranked. As for the future of each title, Chivalry 2 has undeniably built up more momentum. Tom Banner has learned from their past mistakes by releasing a roadmap and sticking to it with several high quality updates published in a timely manner. Mordhau unfortunately fell into the same pitfall of Chivalry 1, limited developer communication and a weak content cycle. The first map that was added three months post launch was the abomination that is Crossroads, a flat plain of grass with a central tower and horses everywhere which like archers are purely a source of frustration as if that isn't bad enough there's a small side tower with a mortar on top that can explode you instantly at great distance. I refuse to play it even to get footage for this video, Maud Howe would be better removing this garbage from the map pool. The other three Mordhau invasion maps that have since released have been much better but still pale in comparison to the two team objective maps that Chivalry 2 released in under a year. The highly anticipated Eastern Invasion Mordhau update ended up being split in half with no timeline on the second part so once again we're seeing record low players. Chivalry 2 on the other hand is about to launch on Steam and they're probably timing that with another big update which will bolster the player base alongside the console crossplay that is already in place. Ultimately when asking which game is better, Chivalry 2 or Mordhau, the question boils down to which game provides superior big team battles and who else could it be other than the inventors of Team Objective. Despite their faults, Tom Banner have undoubtedly returned to their throne with Chivalry's sequel.